Generally, games are supposed to be fun, but they certainly don't have to be. They can also make you frightened, excited, or full of seething hatred, whether they meant to or not. This list features a bunch of games that really wanted to make you rage, whether through unbelievable difficulty levels or handing the game design reins to your fellow sadistic players. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games that want you to hate them. Number 10, Marble Madness, 1984. Some games are hard in ways that propel you to want to master them, and some games are hard in ways that make you want to propel your head into a wall. Marble Madness is the latter. In the 1984 arcade game, you play as a humble marble, making your way downtown, rolling fast, there's ramps to surpass, and you're goal bound. I remember playing a variation of this mechanic back in my high school IT class, which consisted of far more gaming than IT learning, and I'm not sure there's a game design mechanic more infuriating. Just like Super Monkey Ball, basically what's required of you is taking said marble from its start location to the goal location, and I think part of what's so irritating is that it seems brain-numbingly easy. And it's not. Somehow every dragon in Elder Scrolls combined doesn't compare to the challenge of getting this stupid ball to the end of these stupid obstacle courses. For those who grew up in the 80s, this was a very quick way to turn an otherwise chill trip to your local grocery store or whatever random place had a machine into a rage fest of a day. They certainly don't make these games like they used to, though in the case of Marble Madness, I'm not convinced that's a bad thing. Number 9, Ninja Gaiden, 2004. If as a kid you were looking for the shortest possible route between booting up a game and having your parents scream at you to wash your mouth out with soap because of your language, Ninja Gaiden was the game for you. Honestly, just about every Ninja Gaiden game is designed with sadistic difficulty in mind, but the 2004 remake had gamers rage quitting in droves. Everyone has a different opinion on which Ninja Gaiden game is the most hate inducing, but we've included this one due to the fact that Team Ninja actually had to rejig the difficulty because players were losing their minds over how brutal it was. Team Ninja delivered the easier Ninja Dog mode with the Ninja Gaiden Black re-release, but they also included an even harder mode, you know, for good measure. The game floods you with super tough and agile enemies, and combat demands a ton of you to hang on for dear life. Your run-of-the-mill enemies are hard enough, but the bosses are absolutely insane. In particular, the flying magenta nightmare boss Alma, whose encounter you have to play pretty much perfectly or you'll die. Though given you're playing Ninja Gaiden, you're probably used to doing that by this point. Number 8, Super Meat Boy, 2010. You can pretty much pick your poison with the games of Edmund McMillan. Whether it's Super Meat Boy, The End is Nigh, or The Binding of Isaac, he doesn't really prescribe to the let's make games easier in the modern era trend. While any of his games would suit this list, as he certainly wants to get you tearing your hair out with any of them, we'd be remiss not to go with Super Meat Boy. His first major hit, co-developed by Tommy Refiners. One of the things that makes Super Meat Boy so unapologetically brutal is that it has no interest in easing you in. Every razor and lethal object laden level demands platforming perfection, often pixel perfect platforming perfection. Team Meat are obviously super across the fact that they expect you to die constantly too, as there's very little lag between your inevitable death and restarting the level. You'll absolutely hate this game in sections, and you're meant to, but there's an argument to be made that the satisfaction you feel when you finally get past a particularly tricky section is blissful enough to make you want to go through it all over again in your valiant quest to save your main squeeze bandage girl from Dr. Fetus. Number 7, Bubsy 3D. Okay, so developer Eidetic may not have actually intended for us to hate this one, but they were so successful at creating one of the most hated games of all time, we'd be remiss not to include it on this list. I refuse to believe anyone could accidentally design a game with imperceivable constant bullets, maddeningly unreliable controls, a soundtrack that literally feels like a nightmare descent into hell, and Honestly, I can't even list off all the things wrong with this game, we'll be here all day. Despite being a cute orange cat, Bubsy is actually super annoying, and Bubsy 3D is mechanically the worst of the franchise. Bubsy 3D is thought to be one of the worst games of all time, and if you played it, I'm sure you can guess why. The PlayStation game has reached infamous status among gamers. In 2015, the game's designer Michael Berlin actually called the game his biggest failure, and he opted to take some time off from the game after its release to quote, think things. Ouch. Number 6. I Wanna Be The Guy, 2007 I Wanna Be The Guy is like the anti-therapist. It has no interest in improving your life or making you feel good about yourself. I Wanna Be The Guy wants to make you feel bad, and it's really good at it. 
If you feel like video games just haven't given you enough trust issues, I Wanna Be The Guy is the game for you. You play as the kid, and you're about to have the worst day ever. It's not only hard from the visible platforming challenges, it throws a bunch of super fun surprise ones at you just to up the ante. Think that hallway's safe? Nope, you've been smushed to death by a flying spike wall. Reckon you can wander under that bright red apple? Nope, it's made of concrete and you're dead. Safely made it past all the apples and now you're on the platforms above them? Nope, the apples are now flying up and you're dead again. Everything is a trap and you have one life. Clouds can't be trusted, apples can't be trusted, platforms can't be trusted. I can only assume that this game is some kind of medical tool designed to skyrocket people's blood pressure. Number 5. Ghosts and Goblins, 1985 I'd argue a lot of games from this era didn't necessarily want you to hate them. You just rock up at the arcade, get as far as you could on your quarter, and then you come back next time and see if you can make that quarter work a little harder and get a little further. Not Ghosts and Goblins though. Ghosts and Goblins wants you to hurt. Upon researching this game, I found an article about a dude that spent 17, yes, 17 years trying to finish it. You can take exactly two hits, and when you die, you're sent right back to the start of the level. Then if you do manage to reach the end of the enemy-riddled, wildly dangerous level, you'll probably get to the end state that requires you to play it through again on a higher difficulty to reach the final boss. If you feel like you've been having the easy upper hand at most video games of late, this might be the one for you, because your ego's getting checked. There are weapon pickups that won't help you, traps that run through the whole game, and the difficulty never lets up. Just this year Capcom have released Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection if you want to hurt all over again, or you could play it on any of the newly added easier difficulty levels and get your revenge. Number 4. Super Mario Maker 2 2019 it's a Mario game! How could a Mario game possibly make it onto this list of super difficult, painful games? Because of you, dear viewer. Or maybe because of your friends who spend their weekends making super hard, painful levels for people like me to play. The official built-in levels may have a relatively reasonable difficulty ceiling, but that does not apply to the community-made levels. Nintendo knew what they were doing, giving Sadist community creators this kind of power, and I've no doubt the collective game of frustration from some of these levels could power a small city. So let's call a spade a spade. Nintendo unleashed a world of pain here. Okay, sure, some of the created levels are just really pretty or creative or clever, but a huge group of them are designed to make you want to tear your hair out. Take out some time to check out 1-1 but with a twist or Super Sagan's magnum opus and you'll see what I mean. The difficulty levels here are psychotic. The only ceiling to difficulty is what one person, the one designing the level, is capable of surpassing themselves. And they get to do that knowing exactly what to do to get through the level. The result is a series of almost impossible levels that prove to be some of the toughest challenges in all the video games. Number 3. Battletoads, 1991 I've heard Battletoads has an ending, but I nor most people who picked it up could tell you what it is, because it's doubtful we'll ever see it. Even if you haven't seen it though, it's pretty common knowledge that this is a really bloody hard game. Yes, there are wildly unfair speeder bike sections that are nigh on impossible to defeat due to their breakneck pace and unpredictability, but there's also infuriating ice sections, which are exactly as painful as you can imagine an ice section would be in a game that's already famous for its miserable, brutal difficulty level. You can play the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rival in co-op too, though it's more likely to risk destroying that relationship with that person than actually helping you beat the game. If you have managed to beat this one, I'm officially very impressed by you. Number 2. Demon Souls, 2009 I could have given this spot to any of From Software's iconic Soulsborne games, but I decided to give it to the one that started them all. Prepare to Die is the name of the game, and you would certainly be doing that. You are expected to struggle. What makes Demon's Souls especially difficult is that death carries so much weight. There's no zapping back to where you began fully intact. This is an RPG, and when you die, you lose the souls you needed to invest into leveling up your character. Dying's not only frustrating, but losing the ability to level effectively makes the game even harder. As for its infamous bosses, sure, once you master their attack patterns and the flow of combat, you're gonna have an easier time. But you're gonna have to die an awful lot before you get to that point. But why is Demon's Souls on this list instead of any other Souls game? Well, there is the matter of Old King Alet, a boss who, with a certain attack, can actually knock a level off your character. And if you keep getting hit by it, you keep losing levels. Those things you've been paying mistakenly grinding for the whole damn game. On top of that fun little fight, if you die in body form anywhere in the game, you're chucked back to the start of the level, every enemy respawns, you lose half your health, and you better make it back to those souls without dying again or they're permanently gone. 
Dying when a boss is on their last tick of health is absolutely agonizing, and while there is an expectation for you to get good, chances are after seeing the You Died screen for the 300th time, you're gonna end up hating this one a little bit. Number 1. Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, 2017 Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy isn't the hardest game on this list, but it does sincerely want you to hate it. To teach you a lesson. About patience, I think? I don't know, I got too annoyed to keep going. You're a half dude in a cauldron, although there's every chance the other half is in there somewhere, armed with a hammer trying to haul yourself up a mountain to the controls of Quop. Seriously, this dude also made Quop. Essentially, you'll wrestle Surgeon Simulator grade controls while doing your best to launch yourself a few extra feet up the escalating pile of crap before inevitably falling down sometimes all the way back to the very beginning, and listening to Bennett Foddy assure you this is a good thing. If that isn't convincing enough, the game's Steam description is exactly two sentences that read, a game made for a certain kind of person, to hurt them. The About section adds these fun tidbits, quote, between two and infinity hours of agonizing gameplay, depending, lose all your progress over and over, and feel new types of frustration you didn't know you were capable of. That said, get to the end of this one and I'm sure you'll feel like a hero. Let me know down in that comment section which games you've played that made you hate them. As always, I've been Jess from More Culture and thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter if you like where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.